I'm gonna use this and this to do this. And you can see the license plate recognition system captured that. In this case, the license plate is literally school bus, in case you couldn't tell. That's the Raspberry Pi. It's taking pictures, as you can see. These are the cars passing by. And we're gonna see how it goes. Hopefully without getting arrested. Oh, uh, so it's for a YouTube video. Now, I was explaining this concept to a friend last week, and she was totally doubting that I could pull this off. For whatever reason, I don't know if she's being a hater or what, but she just doesn't think that I can pull this off. So, why don't you think I can make this happen? Nope, I don't think you can, bro. Not by this Sunday. I don't think the, the Raspberry Pi has enough capacity to accomplish what you're trying to do by this Sunday. Nope. Okay, she sounds so confident. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna place a bet. If I can get the Raspberry okay. Pi to recognize 30 license plates in one hour, then I win the bet. You have to send me a selfie admitting defeat, and I'm gonna post that selfie on the video. But if I can't get it to work by Sunday, then I'm gonna Venmo you $100. Sound good? Sounds good, for sure, let's do it. And with that, the pressure was on. Can I get it to work with just the five days I have to make it happen? So the way this setup will work is we're gonna program our Raspberry Pi to continuously record video of cars passing by. At the same time, we'll run another program that will periodically convert that video into pictures and then send those pictures to a cloud license plate recognition service, which will analyze that image for license plates and return the results. We'll then take those results and save it to Google Cloud data store, which is a cloud database, all in real time. So say farewell to vehicular privacy, sit right back, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. So for those coming in cold, a Raspberry Pi is a single board computer about the size of a credit card. What's amazing about it is it only costs $35. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is take our micro SD card out of our Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna use the uh, micro to SD, and then what I'm gonna do is throw this right into my computer. Okay, so with the micro SD card inserted into my computer, we can see it showing up as this boot drive here. So so we're gonna download Raspberry Pi Imager and flash the operating system. We're gonna to go to raspberrypi.com and then we're gonna to go to software and then we're gonna download Imager, in my case for Mac. Go ahead and install that. Okay, and then we're gonna boot that up. And then for operating system, we're just gonna choose stable 32-bit and then for storage, I'm gonna select my 32 gigabyte micro SD card and then we're gonna pre-configure and, um, and input our Wi-Fi credential as well as allow SSH. Okay, so we're gonna set the host name to raspberrypi.local. That's the default that works. We're gonna enable SSH, and then we're going to supply a password. And then we're gonna go ahead and select write. Okay, and it looks like that just completed. So we'll go ahead and eject our SD card. Okay, and we can see the SD card has been ejected. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this from my computer. And we're gonna pop out the micro SD card, and then we're gonna pop it into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now that the micro SD card is formatted, we just need to connect the camera ribbon and, and place it into the chassis. So the way we do that is you open up this here. See this clasp goes up and down. Take the camera ribbon here. We ultimately want this thing to go like that, right? It's kind of hard to do, but make sure that the um, metal strips are facing towards the, I guess the Raspberry Pi logo. Put that in like that. Clasp down. Okay. Now what we should be able to do is I'm going to put this in here. Okay, cool. And then you can see that is the camera lens. Okay, and then I'm gonna screw this um, mounted tripod head to the Raspberry Pi like this, and then we're gonna put this on an actual tripod. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put this guy on this tripod here. Okay, so that is our Raspberry Pi, and it is facing 
towards a license plate that I printed out. So we're gonna program it and run some tests and make sure that it can detect that license plate. And then when we feel comfortable, we'll bring it on the road. Okay, so let's connect to the Raspberry Pi over SSH. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ping the host name to make sure that it is connected to our network. And we can see that it's returning ICMP traffic. So that looks good to me. And then we're gonna SSH in, so we're gonna do pi at raspberrypi.local. And then I just need to clear out these fingerprints here. So I'll do that with Vim, and then we'll establish a new connection. Okay, do we wanna create a new fingerprint? We do. And then we're gonna supply the password that we set in the pre-configuration. And as you can see that we're in our Raspberry Pi and this looks pretty good here. So I'm gonna elevate myself to root, and the first thing I'm gonna do is um, update the operating system with these commands here. And again, all the commands are available in the description, so you can just cut and paste those. Okay, and so the, the Raspberry Pi is gonna reboot, so let's um, try to connect to it. it. Looks like it's back up, so let's SSH back in. Elevate to root. Okay, and notice that when we upgraded everything, we got all our folders here. So I'm gonna to navigate to desktop and we're gonna install some of the dependencies that we're gonna need here. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to install is Node because we're gonna write our script in Node.js. And then we're gonna install 13.5 using Node Version Manager, NVM. And then we're going to point to 13.5. So we're gonna do NVM use 13.5. And then we're just gonna validate what version of Node we have. We have 13.5, so that looks good. Okay, and then we're gonna download the GitHub repository that I set up. So this is my GitHub account. If I go to repositories, this is the new video, video license plate detection repository. So I'm gonna click into it, and then I'm gonna to go to code. And I'm just gonna copy this address here. And we're just gonna run git clone and then supply that address. And this is gonna download that entire directory and then we can start programming with it. And again, we put it on the desktop. Okay, so there's an extension called Remote SSH, which lets you connect to a remote device and edit those files using VS Code. It's super useful. And so I set this up and I pointed it to pi at raspberrypi.local which is gonna be the host name, and then it's just gonna prompt me for the password. Okay, and then it's asking like, what file should I look into? So I'm gonna run pwd, and I'm gonna grab this path, and I'm gonna supply it over here. So now you can see these are all the files that we downloaded from GitHub. So for instance, this is one of our JavaScript files right here. And what's also cool is you can preview these images here, right here in VS Code. So this is just an easy way to develop on the Raspberry Pi. We don't have to do it over SSH. Okay, so the two main files here are gonna be only capture video, this file here, and then watch video. And we need to run both of these simultaneously. But the gist of how it works is this guy here, only capture video, just uses libcamvid to take 10 second videos and every time it finishes taking a 10 second video, it just overwrites this flag.txt file. And this here listens for changes on flag.txt. So basically every time a new video comes through, it then will split it up into frames and then it'll analyze the images and send the data off to our remote cloud license plate detector. So that's the gist of how it works. Okay, so I just wanna make sure our camera's working properly. So I'm gonna run this command here, libcamera JPEG, that is just going to take a still image and then we can review what that looks like. Okay, and then it wrote the file to test.jpg. So I'm just gonna click that. And this looks pretty good. So we'll leave the camera as is and we'll run our program against what is um, currently presented in front of it there. Okay, so let's see if we can't get our first script to run. So this is only capture video.js. There's a function here that says take video and essentially it runs the libcam. It takes a 10 second video. It outputs it to dot h264. It sets the dimensions of the video. Once it's done with that, it will just update this flag file. And the reason it does that is because their other script is gonna be listening for updates to that flag file. And anytime an update is made, it's then gonna kick off the analysis process. But this script's only job is to take videos 10 seconds at a time. So let's go ahead and see if we can't run this. So the way we would do that is we would just run node and then supply the file name. So you can see it logged this take video function and that looks good and that was about 10 seconds right and now it it, it 
it wrote the flag and it's taking another video. So it's writing the file to here, .h264. Now, VS Code can't play .h264. It should be working properly. We can see it's, it's working here, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and kill that. We'll come back to that later. Now, the second script is watch video.js script here. So again, what this does is it listens for the flag file. And anytime the flag file is touched, it converts the .h264 uh, to an mp4. And then it takes that video and splits it out into a bunch of frames, right? Because we need images to run the analysis. And then when that's done, it will iterate through all the images and send the data off to platerecognizer.com. And then it takes the results and it will save the results. And it saves the results to data store, Google data store, which we imported up here. So there's a bunch of dependencies in the script. So let's try running this script and see if we can't uh, at least get all the um, functions to run properly. So I'm just gonna supply node and then we're gonna do watch video. Okay, so everything ran except for the save data function. So the reason that didn't work is because in order to save data to Google Cloud Data Store, we need to be able to connect to, um, to a Google Cloud Platform. So the way we do that is first, let's go set up our account. So I'm gonna go over to my browser here, and then I'm gonna to go to a Google Cloud Platform. If you don't have an account, you can go ahead and create one. They'll give you a $300 credit. So we wanna use a product called Data Store. This is a NoSQL database. Okay, so there's currently nothing in Data Store, but I have a project set up. Um, I enabled a Data Store. It might ask you to enable the Data Store API. You're gonna to wanna to do that because we're interacting with this NoSQL database. This is kind of like MongoDB, but Google's version. We're gonna be interacting with this using the API. Now, in order to uh, authenticate, we need to create a service account. So we're gonna go into IAM, which is Identity and Access Management, and then we're gonna come down to service accounts. Okay, and then we're gonna to go to create new service account, and I'm just gonna call this a license plate detection. And then we can continue through this. And the role we want to give it, we're gonna do basic, and then we're going to do owner because it needs to be able to read and write data. There's probably a more granular access level we can get it, but I don't wanna contend with that right now. So we're just gonna use this. Okay, and now we have this service account here. So this is now a way that we can authenticate and get into our GCP account. Now, there are different ways to actually um, download the data. We're gonna do uh, a JSON key. So we're gonna do manage keys, and then we're gonna do add key, and then we're gonna do create new key, and we're gonna select JSON, create this. And then what you can do is you can just open this file and copy the contents and we'll go back over to VS Code. And we just want to um, add that to the Raspberry Pi. So what we could do is we could just do new text file, and then we could paste this in, and then we can save it as uh, key, keys.json. Uh, keys Super quick, but if you have issues editing the files, like it won't let you save because of permission issues, then run this guy, chmod recursive 777, on the topmost directory, like the GitHub repository. And then that should make everything editable for you. So when we execute this watch video JS file is by prefacing the command with a reference to the service account. Watch video.js, but we also preface it with this and that should authenticate us. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, so now we can see that the program's working correctly. It's periodically taking pictures. We can see the preview of those pictures and it's saving those frames as output followed by the index. And so just to prove that this is all real time, I'm gonna go over and move the license plate and we should see it update in the image previewer here. Okay, and now we can see that it did in fact move because it is taking pictures in real time. Okay, so for the license plate recognition, we're gonna use a service called platerecognizer.com. And we're gonna be able to do this all using the free tier. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just create an account. 
and that will provide you with an API key. Okay, and once you log into a plate recognizer, you can select apps and it should bring you to this dashboard here. And this is gonna give you your API token and it's also going to show you how many requests you've made. So we get 250 for free at a rate limit of one per second, which is very generous. And then as we take pictures, they're gonna show up in the dashboard section here. Additionally, once we are out on the road, we needed to have our Raspberry Pi automatically connect to my iPhone's mobile hotspot. So the way you can set up preferred networks is by editing a file called WPA supplicant. So all I'm gonna do is add a new entry to that file at the top that provides my mobile hotspot Wi-Fi credentials. And once you've completed that, anytime the Raspberry Pi boots up, it will automatically try to connect to that network first. And that will give us internet access on the go. And so I'm just gonna reboot the Raspberry Pi and test that it's able to connect to my mobile hotspot. And I turned off my Wi-Fi in my apartment, so it only has one option. Okay, and now you can see it's connected to my hotspot, not my apartment's Wi-Fi. So we can see uh, the images being rendered in real time, and that is our camera. It would be better if we had more flow, but uh, it seems to be working, because check this out. If we go to the dashboard page here, we can just see all of them. And so if we go over to dashboard, we can see basically every image that we sent to the API that had a license plate detected, it will store here and it shows the timestamp, it shows the actual license plate that was determined, and it also shows the confidence level. So we could like add a threshold to say like it has to be 95% confident in order to store it. You can do a lot of fancy things. But I, I really like this dashboard, it's all real time. And you can see these are a lot of the pictures that we took on the road. So like this car was moving when we took that. That car was moving. And you can see like they're pretty small sometimes and it's still like SRB70, SRB70. It's pretty good. Hex22, look how small that is. So it's doing, it did pretty well. School bus, I thought this was funny, right? School bus. And then you can see that's, it literally says school bus. <laughs> so that was funny. CXCW20. CXCW20, so it's really, really accurate. Now these should also be stored in Google Data Store. So we can go take a look at that. And we can see that we have a bunch of entries here. Yeah, so we successfully stored these in a Google Cloud Data Store. I just wanted to show how to store the results into a database as well. And at the very end, I sent evidence to Lexi proving that I was able to detect 30 license plates in under an hour. And she gracefully admitted defeat with this picture she sent. You almost had me. You never had me. You never had your car. If you like this video, then you're gonna love my video showing how I did license plate detection using a custom TensorFlow machine learning model running on the edge. It's super impressive, you'll learn a ton, and you can check that video out here. Anyways, thanks for watching.